accepting your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews, and Spectrum Radio 1 FM 90. A happy new year to you all. You're welcome to Spectrum on Radio 1. My name is Edmond Chiseto, your host. On Spectrum tonight, President Jorim Seven is New Year message. Is it in tandem with the aspirations of Ugandans? As many of us were busy making New Year resolutions, the chief executive of the country, Yoweri Kagutam Seven, issued a 27-page document in which he assessed the performance of government in 2011 and also hinted at the measures to make the situation better in 2012. His statement is dominated by his own views on how the economy fared last year and how it is set to stay resilient under what he calls the prudent management of the NRM government. The president also highlights key sector interventions that will be a focus of the national budget in 2012 and other measures geared at making the public sector better. He also talks about the oil and gas sector, saying that relevant laws to deal with issues raised by Parliament will be tabled in Parliament this year. Lastly, but not least, the President indicates that the NRM government will remain determined to fight corruption and lords the Ninth Parliament for the struggle it has launched against corruption. He, however, cautioned the legislators against what he called undue excitement. President Museveni summed up his statement by saying, Let 2012 be the year for peace, hard work, accountability, and efficient service and integrity. At Parliament today, legislators welcomed the statement issued by President Museveni, but insisted that the President must walk the talk. So tonight we analyze the New Year's message of the President to understand what he has planned for the country in 2012. Our guests tonight, Honorable Geoffrey Kanya, Shadow Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. You're most welcome, Honorable Kanya. Thank you and good evening. We also are joined by Mr. Henry Maigai, Senior Administrator at Macquarie University, also an NRM Party member. You're welcome, Mr. Maiga. Thank you so much. Honorable Ekanya, the President spoke against graft, saying government remains committed to its political will to stamp out corruption, especially within the public service. Does it convince you when he says the things he said? It is, uh, of course, uh, I doubt whether there are people who believe the President anymore, apart from those who think that uh, they are now they now have opportunity to be close to power those those kind uh, those type of persons will defend and believe the president that is committed because they have been outside power in courts and they think that this is their time but uh, i sympathize with the president because he has repeated the same words over 20 times, even while he was in the bush. He used to say the same. He came to power. If you follow the trail of corruption, it ends on his desk. And uh, he admitted that sometimes people take him documents and he signs unknowingly. And uh, therefore, he has admitted that uh, the trail of corruption ends on his desk and is entangled in it. We really, if the president is committed to finding corruption, we want to make proposal, and if he loves this country very much, we need immediately to restore a term limit. And uh, he should not wait for parliament, if he has applauded parliament for fighting corruption, for us to collect signature, to remove his ministers, because ministers serve at the pleasure of the president. The clear facts indicate that uh, the ministers, the governor, Bank of Uganda, and other technical people have been mentioned not only by the Auditor General, the IGG, by police. What the president is doing is only trying to play what a Muganda would say, Katemba. <coughs> Being dramatic or something. Yeah, just playing games to appease the international community that you told me to put up institutions, the institutions are there. And that's the same message he's telling Parliament, that the institutions are there. Uh, he's telling uh, the voters that he's committed to fighting corruption because he knows that uh, this is one of the issues that we likely to cause the NRM to lose power. But at the end of the day, no concrete action. I can just give you an example. If you follow 
the, the, the train, for example, the uh, commission of inquiry in police. Yes. Most the, the report came out beautiful, no action, nobody refunded money. In the Ministry of Defense, good reports, promised action, nothing. People are just taken to prison one or two days. Those who do, don't agree with him, he has files on almost everybody who is a threat eh, to his power. You can call, you are taken to prison. And if you kneel down, you accept to cooperate with him, then he, he will be released. That's his game. <clears throat> okay, but you mentioned Tamlin. We're talking about corruption. What's the connection between Tamlin and some corruption? The, 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 the issue is that uh, because people, some people now think that they need to survive. Even some people whom you would think that they are clean, they are now being wooed. And this virus is spreading. Corruption, if it be fought, it starts with the head of state. Yes. As we speak now, the people of this country do not have very, very uh, legitimate means to remove the head of state and then have him disciplined. The head of state appoints the electoral commission, the entire electoral machinery and All security. Right. Okay. And uh, so you, you know what happened to Kasuja, he was involved in corruption. You know the ghost, two million voters, that's all uh, aspects of corruption. In politics. <laughs> Mr. Henry Maiga, talk to us about the President's statement. Of course, you come from the NRM. Uh, the opposition, uh, through uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable Kanya, says he's not serious. Is he really serious? <laughs> First of all, I think I want to start by saying that uh, it's the responsibility of every citizen in this country to get involved in the fight against corruption. Even personally, I'm as concerned as anybody else as any taxpayer in this country because one time I remember the president uh, was met by one of the bishops in this country, I'm not going to name names, um, who was complaining about corruption. The president said, help me because I've also been trying to fight corruption and also to look for people who can actually be in charge of the conduct of public affairs in this country who are not corrupt. But uh, whoever I appoint, it appears, they just do things that uh, go in the direction of corruption. And the bishop said, okay, let me go out. Said, because the bishop actually, I mean, the president asked the bishop to bring in people who are not corrupt. Up to now, because this was, I think, an assignment given in the early 2000s. And he has never brought anybody who is not corrupt. Well, that's not to say that we shouldn't be as concerned. The president is concerned about corruption in this country. And I think that's the reason why he has come out um, with this kind of statement to say that corruption must be fought. And I think it was very clear about it because uh, there are quite a number of cases of corruption where he has actually given a go ahead to the police to investigate these cases. But uh, of course, when he was talking about corruption in his speech, New Year's message, he was clear enough to say that please don't, as parliament, as you actually fight corruption or join the war against corruption, make sure that you involve the investigative organs in this country uh, so that they actually do the job, you do the job together. And I think I was very clear about that. So that shows the amount of commitment that he has. He gave an example, for instance. He's concerned about, for instance, the road sector in this country and the fund that is supposed actually to be used to construct roads, repair them and so on, this kind of thing. And he gave an example of the road between Mbarara and Katuna, whose price is twice as much as the road, the other side of Rwanda, which should be actually almost, I think, shorter. Same. Yeah? And the terrain is the same and all these kinds of things. So you see somebody who is concerned. The terrain is even worse in yeah. Rwanda. You see, for me, what I want to say to the citizens of the country, that when it comes to the fight of corruption, all of us have a responsibility to fight it. It is not a one-man show. It is not the president alone. Everybody should be committed to the fight against corruption because it's a cancer. Today I was reading the newspapers. I think it must have been a monitor newspaper where two people wrote articles and they said that, look, before even the church leaders speak against corruption, they must check the corruption in the church. And I thought that was very interesting. And for me, before I point, I, I, I point fingers to anybody, and as far as corruption is concerned, I want us to take a commitment as citizens of this country to stamp out this cancer together. Well, the president, uh, one of the issues that have been mentioned is the ministers that he, he said uh, were not very, very clean, uh, Saida Bumba and Chid Makuya, and he's, he's not been able to sack them. Well, because partly the investigations are still continuing. But, but he's expressed. Yeah, but he has expressed that. But he won't sack them. Why? 
Well, the sacking, I'm not very sure because I don't sit in the president's office. And I'm not really working in the state house. So I can't say clearly here the reasons as to why he's not taking that step. But what I know is that actual investigations are actually taking place in the direction but of actually let finding me just out what the my brother, Peter. Whether this uh, wonderful gentleman and lady are actually involved in corruption, which I think eventually we are going to get there. And once we get there, the truth is going to come out. And I think everybody is going to believe that this just against corruption is as truthful as possible. You okay. know, people think uh, that Ugandans forget, but I want to encourage Ugandans to read. Most of this information is now on the net, which people can get, those who are privileged, in the Internet Cafe. Just go and serve Infrastructure Africa. This was a study done by the World Bank, by the AU team together eh, to find out the cost of road and infrastructure in the world yes. and sub-Saharan Africa. Yes. And Uganda is three times Look at the terrain, you know, flatness, they get the water free, the stones are not very expensive, you know. You know, like in our Bustema, they're just getting the stones which they make, the you know, bitments and so forth, but three times. But if you look at that sector of wax, the people, the president has been complaining, some of them have been there for the last 15 years. While a chicken thief in our villages, when it's got, they get it once, twice, the third time, they'll burn you. Set you on fire. Yes, set you on fire. I don't support mob justice. So, that's why I'm saying you follow the trail of corruption. It ends on the present days. Because these permanent secretaries, these accounting officers, are appointed annually by the president. One permanent secretary going to court to pass vote of no confidence on his government during the case of uh, Professor Bukenya. A permanent secretary goes to court and says, really saying, there is no money lost. And yet the IGG has said money lost. All of us with the president who have admitted money lost and said no, no money is lost. All right. So, so you see, so where does corruption end? All right. In this case, in Singapore, a prime minister was jailed. But here it is a song, it is Katemba. Well, well the, laws, the laws which come from parliament also provide no. that somebody can ask for bail or these kinds of things. All right. And we are not the ones who actually make the laws. It's parliament where Honorable Kanya, who is actually my Musanji. <laughs> because these laws are made by parliament where a provision is actually in there that gives somebody a chance to come out actually all on right. bail and all these kinds of things. So until, and the president, you remember some time ago, was saying that, look, why don't we look at this law again? Okay. And we didn't these people bail. So has the parliament done its job as far as that is concerned? Because when you catch a thief, that person should be incarcerated in prison without coming out. This is and Press Press listeners on Radio 1 tonight. President Yorim Seven is New Year's message. Is it in tandem with aspirations of Ugandans? Our guest, Honorable Geoffrey Kanye, Shadow Minister of Finance, and Mr. Henry Maiga, Senior Administrator at Macquarie University, also from the NRM Party. You'll be able to call in in the second half of this discussion and make your comments, ask questions, or even general uh, make a general contribution. I'll read out the numbers when that time comes. You can also send your text message to 7197. That is Spectrum message, question, or comment. Send it to 7197. Let's talk about the economy. Even when there's graph, the economy has been growing honorable. Kenya economic hardships, inflation very high. 6.5% is the target for 12 to 12. You, know, you need to look at U U Uganda as a country that blessed by God. Uh, this this growth by this growth figure is questionable. That's one. The growth figure is based on hunting and gathering. I have repeatedly said this: exploiting the natural resources. Go on, which natural resources? Uh, because now, in the president said uh, agriculture has performed very well. How much money, or percentage of our budget, do we put in the agriculture sector? Is there a fertilizer in this country? I just got you talking about Malawi. You know, what the president of Malawi they distribute seeds, fertilizer, pesticides. They have silos, they even do market search. But in this country, no fertilizer, irrigation, which was done by the part where my brother came from, UPC, all <laughs> died. So it is hunting and gathering. The cotton farmers in this country, when the price, you know, there is now cotton boom in the world, farmers were told a kilo of cotton would go between 2,500 to 3,000. Farmers went to the bank, borrowed money, sold their cows. Now their cotton is being bought at 800, 800 shillings. shillings yeah. So that's the growth the president is talking about. At his home, there is growth, but in the village where we come from, the farmers are dying. 
Honorable Michael. <laughs> is there a connection with these macroeconomic figures? And I think there is, but I see normally because it's good he has mentioned I was in the opposition and the UPC. I remember how we used to conduct the business of commenting about these figures from government because whichever came from government would dismiss it as something that was concocted. And uh, well, the president I will go by the figures which he gave, and I want to imagine that he was truthful because it was projected that actually would grow by 6.5 percent. Yes. But there was a shortfall, and we grew by 5.9. Yes. Those are the figures which actually come from the technocrats. And uh, I would want to imagine that these people, the technocrats, actually look at how much we produce and all these kinds of things. And I am up a bit that actually the economy of Uganda is going to continue to grow um, as predicted, even in this financial year. I, I want to be up, I, I'm upbeat about that. And uh, I want to imagine that uh, given the kind of markets that we have in the region, um, when we increase our food production in this country, the economy is going to grow. Because at the moment as we speak, you remember we actually are supplying lots of food to Eastern Congo, the DRC. We are supplying food uh, to Southern Sudan. We are supplying food to parts of Kenya. We are supplying food in Rwanda. I was recently amused by somebody who works in Makere University, a Rwandese girl. And she said that actually in Rwanda there is no food. Yes. And every month when she gets a salary, she has to send beans and a Porsche from this country. So yeah. if we really tap into this potential that we have as a country, I am upbeat. Definitely the economy of Uganda is going to grow. But the argument is that most of this development comes from infrastructure development, which are gali 700 billion, well, about around 800 million dollars officially. Uh, we have investments from oil. So most of this is coming from infrastructure, which does not seep down directly to the poor. Yeah, but you see, the economy normally when it grows, I mean, when, even when you look at the growth of the economies in other countries, for instance, in the West, the way the pattern of growth, well, it, 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 it initially that was created by a country or an economy of a country will not go down immediately, but eventually, with good macro and micro economic policies, that wealth is destined to trickle down to the common person in the villages and all these kinds of things. But fortunately, what we have here is that actually people are producing for a larger economy, as I've said, and therefore. For for instance, if I, I have my head of cattle, I come from this rural side, and I have my head of cattle, they want to send my beef to, um, to southern Sudan. Yes. They, they go buying meat all along the way as they go to southern Sudan, and definitely as a person who is on the ground, you see, Peter, the bridges, the, I'm going to get some little the, bit the of argument, money. This economy can even grow at more than 10% if it, is, if it was well managed. Right. I was just saying it is we're exploiting the idle opportunity and transferring the cost of non growth to the future generation. Five years ago, fish was the second foreign exchange earned in this country. Yes. We just go, go to Lake Victoria, Lake Albert, and do gathering. You know, Tanzania and Kenya introduced what called uh, called uh, CES. The fish factory that were along the lake yes. were charged taxes because the Tanzania and Kenya government knew that fish would get exhausted. Yes. Now in Uganda, they said nothing comes. So most of the factories moved here. The, the fish is exhausted. If it was well-minded economy, you, see, you know that fish in the next 10 years would get exhausted. Then you start fish farming so that you don't transfer the cost of negative growth to the future population. The growth has been because the energy that has been supporting the growth has been charcoal. People went to the forest. Right. Now a sack of charcoal is 80,000. So this gro kind of growth is unsustainable. It is not really growth. It is negative minus. All right. This is Petro Maridio. I want to go on for a break. We'll be back. We'll talk about some of the priorities the president outlined. Five of them. One, agriculture. Second, energy. Second, roads. That's infrastructure. Third, energy. Fourth, uh, education. And the public service. One of the things he said in the public service, they'll strengthen contract management. They will rotate permanent secretaries. Every two years, they'll be sent to another ministry to curb corruption. So they don't build thrones from which they, well, could steal. We'll go for a break. We'll be back. Just like an uncut diamond is brought to life by a max skill and dedication, Pami our brewmaster holds the secret to crafting a crystal malt lager. Under the exacting international standards at Nalbury's, he uses only the finest, most carefully selected grains of roasted crystal malt and sets in motion the delicate process of releasing their full roast. The result is a world-class beer with a fresher aroma, a richer golden color, and a maltier taste. Nile Gold Crystal Malt Lager. Beyond an ordinary malt. Not for sale to persons under 18. Free internet access for everyone. <laughs> 
Join the revolution. Stop browsing instantly with your internet enabled phone and discover a whole new world. Whether it's Google, Facebook, Twitter, newspapers, or gossip, everyone can now get free instant internet access. Everyone, everywhere. MTN, everywhere you go. Terms and conditions apply. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanley Bank. Welcome back to the first spectrum in the new year tonight. President Chiari Museveni's is New Year's message is it in tandem with the aspirations of Ugandans. Our guests tonight, Honorable Geoffrey Kanya, Shadow Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and Mr. Henry Maika, Senior Administrator at Makere University, also um, Senior Mobilizer from the NRM Party. You'll also be able to contribute to this discussion. Let's talk about the priorities, Honorable Kanya. When the President spoke, he said uh, he gave five priorities, agriculture, one, two, roads, three, energy, four, education, five public service. Is that not a good lineup? No, it is a good lineup. but you see, the, the, the issue is right now, as the President is speaking, is it kind of recasting the budget of last year and projecting the, uh, the next year, uh, this year, 2012, uh, the coming budget. But he has forgotten that most of these roads that he is talking about roads, there are some roads, for example, Tororo, Soroti, uh, Kamuli, Jinja, uh, Mubende, they have been on budget, money was even leased, dot service, but there's nothing, 90 billion shillings went. As I was coming here, myself, the Auditor General, Minister of Finance, launched the construction of Office of the Auditor General, the place he just referenced. We are now, since July, we are now in January, eh? and the construction was supposed to be 24 months. No single man has been released, most of the projects. Three years ago, against the entire position worked out. I stood on the floor of the house and supported money for building a market for Ugandans in southern Sudan. Because I went there, I saw the Kenyan government that built warehouses, they opened a bank, and yet Ugandans fought in Sudan. But Uganda, I mean, Ugandans are in a market like we know selling Membu, Chako, uh, Bogoya, while the Kenyans are in big contracts. So I got concerned. So we agreed to put money to build a modern market, a warehouse. There are plans to build uh, yes. 12 markets in yeah. towns. No, in southern Sudan. Even in border towns. Yeah. 12, 12, 12. So yesterday I talked to Ambassador Busso, who has been in southern Sudan. He said he has kind of given up. Three years, there's still studies, nothing on the ground. So that is the way this economy is managed. So you're saying even this prioritization doesn't convince you? This little, really. Honorable Mike, Mr. Mike. Uh, of course, for me, as I've said before, I want to be up a bit about these things because, uh, for instance, when it comes to the construction of roads, um, they say the construction of a, the expansion of Entebbe road, the, the road to Entebbe and the road to Jinja, uh, is due to start this year, 2012. Yes. And I, am, I remain up a bit because the good thing is that the funds have been actually identified with the help assistance from the Chinese, from China. Chinese government. And I'm up a bit about that one. Agriculture, I think I've, I've, I've talked about that one because we have a potential. It's actually not a cooperative advantage. It's an absolute advantage. Uganda has a very good climate. We can produce so many things that can earn us money and feed into the markets, as I've said, of DRC, of Southern Sudan of Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and so on and so forth. Even the Burundi, actually, they don't have food. So Uganda, in other words, is supposed to be the food basket in this region. And therefore, as a country, we have to express this potential to the fullest because of this absolute advantage in as far as agricultural production and productivity is concerned. And the rest of the things. So I am really upbeat about the budget sector priorities as put out by the president because a country which does not actually develop its infrastructure next network, a country which does not exploit its absolute advantage position is in trouble. So as, as a government, I'm sure, uh, the NRM is going to ensure that the infrastructure development in this country is carried out and uh, agriculture production is going to increase. And therefore, we'll be, I think, doing very well in terms of the economy. Well, but you talk about absolute advantage. Tanzania has large tracts of land. So yeah, but, but, but uh, southern Sudan. Semi-desert. Semi-arid. Semi Semi-arid. Not semi-desert. Semi-arid. Well, Tanzania has a lot yeah. of arable land. South, yeah. south, south, southern Sudan. They just leased out uh, about 400 tracts. Yeah, but you see, you, you have to factor in quite a number uh, of things. Because if you have large tracts of land and the infrastructure, the road network is also not good. That right. becomes a problem. But in Uganda, we are 
relatively smaller than Tanzania. Yeah. Maybe Tanzania, well, Uganda is about three times uh, the size. I mean, Tanzania is about three times the size of Uganda. And therefore, for us, it would become because you look west, you can export food items or official products to the DRC. You look north, you can export quite a lot of food uh, items yes. to southern Sudan. You look Kenya, you look southwards in Rwanda and Burundi, you can still export quite a lot of things from the In terms Arab of Russia. time, we still have so, You know, what yeah. Peter is saying is really true, and that's why to me, I, I really believe that the economy will be growing at 10%, but we are just growing by chance, this 5 or 6%. Because, uh, you know, th there is nothing government is putting. Government is collecting money. You sell a whole sack of maize, and then you buy uh, one kilo of sugar. <laughs> You know, Go on. The, 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 the linkage, you know, there's no linkage with agricultural production and the industrial production. Value addition. Yeah, look, the, the, the roads, I, I, I came from China in December and I had a meeting with our ambassador to China, His Excellency Wagdos, and I asked him, why is that the Chinese are not building the road? Because I sit in a, a committee of national economy. Who approved this loan? Eh? And the road work should have started. Well, do you know what That's else? That's the road in Eastern Europe. No, the Entebbe Express Highway, yeah, whoa, whoa, that what Peter has talked about, which the president talked about. People and so on. There's no money in the budget for compensation. In fact, I want to encourage you, the indicative budget for next year is already out. And we are still planning as if we are on one-year rolling plan. We now have a five-year development plan. UNDP. Yes, UNDP. But the Minister of Finance and Government for the next year's budget as if it is still a one-year rolling plan. We have not really even accepted the the NDP. So the Entebb Express, the Chinese have put money on the table. The problem is government has not provided. Government provides figures, but there, there's no release. Let's talk about the yeah, public, but, uh, public but sector. A small comment about that one because. I, I happen to have access to some of this uh, information yes. because I think the citizens of this country should know that actually as we speak this the, especially these two roads are going to be actually worked on this year yeah yes that is the information which I have and therefore by the president coming out openly to tell the citizens of this country that this money is now available. He's very, he's being very truthful. Well, we can give him so, the benefit of doubt. Yeah. 2012 is here. Not even the benefit of doubt. Actually, it's the truth of the matter. Let me just by ask: When was the contractor uh, identified? All right. No, I don't have the, the, the benefit of the doubt. 2012 yeah. is here with us. That's right, Mr. Michael. Let's talk about the public service. The government doesn't seem to be very keen on helping the teachers out of their predicament. They give no, high salaries somehow. But the president issue. announced that the salaries of teachers and I think scientists are going to be increased in this financial year. Yes. You see, let's also look at the size of the basket from which we are getting all these resources to look after ourselves better as a country. I mean, how much is there in the basket so that you look after the teachers in this country, you look after the doctors in this country, look after the scientists in the country and the rest of the people because there are quite a number of other workers in this country who should also be looked but the president in his speech, New Year's message, he said that priority is going to be given to the teachers and to the scientists and I, I really wanted to take his word because those are areas where, where I come from in Makari University I think scientists have actually benefited from this kind of arrangement from the government. They are now getting lots of support from the government in terms of research and so on and so forth. And I think this is the direction this government is taking. Tony Bakanya, when the president spoke about the oil and gas sector, he said uh, that uh, the NRM is going to ensure that the resource is better managed. Do you think it's finally opened up to accountability? No, they, they, it is a matter of time. There is a lot of covert operation in the oil sector. Go ahead. Covert operations? Yes. Uh, yes, I, will, I returned from Ghana some time back and yes. I met Italo. They said in Ghana, and they gave us the oil and the, the oil law, it is, it is on the, the web. You can and just you know, and all payments in Ghana, Ghana has just yes began to export oil to yeah. drill oil. It, everything's published, and Talo said the problem is your government. And some time back, I was in UK. Talo is so worried that there is no commitment of this government eh, to really have them do the investment in this country. They use parliament, parliament is making noise, then he calls the NRM caucus, eh? but covertly he does something totally different. What do you mean he does something different? But w what do I mean is that uh, why has it taken government 
all this time to come up with the law. Why are we using the law of Obote 1, Obote 2? Yes, why are we using such a law? And yet he knew, he said he took people like uh, uh, other people to universities to start about this. We have been doing exploration. He knows about this thing. You know, so there is a lot of covert and untruthness about this oil and gas sector. Mr. Redman, I, I don't want to believe uh, what my son is saying because normally a law, he, and he knows better because he is in parliament, to come out with a law takes a bit of time, of course. Um, right now, as we speak, we have 23 bills which are before parliament. Of course, they were inherited from the eighth parliament. Yes. And as far as I know, there is preparation for coming out for a law, coming out with a law on oil. And uh, the process between now and when we come out with this law as a country to govern our oil resources uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that actually brings economic benefits to all of us as citizens. Uh, I, I don't know how much time, time, time limit is, but I, I can see the urgency of the matter of coming out with this law so that we address all the concerns. And I want to believe Mr. that this remember the statement of the president is, uh, uh, in the offing is definitely going to come out uh, in pretty good time, and definitely the oil sector is going to manage it very well. You remember the promise of the president that the early oil production would have been 2012. Does he talk about that anymore? He yeah, talked about heavy fuel yeah. and uh, but, uh, uh, diesel or uh, kerosene, and he said, you know, the issue of power. He, what, what happened? He doesn't have to talk about it there, but at least in his. Well, but Parliament came out to block some of those moves. Yeah. No, there, there was That's, nothing. And, uh, you know, really, to and say. I was, I was going to, say, to tell my Msanya that we see some of these uh, uh, problems that we have at the moment, and as far as the oil sector is concerned, I think Parliament, uh, Parliament is partly to blame. Because as we progress, Parliament passes the resolutions. Then the Things are now in court. You know, that stumbles almost everything and things will not move according to plan. So we need to wake up. And when you talk about government, of course, I hope you, as my son, you know that uh, Parliament is part and parcel of the government. And therefore, I would, wa I would prefer, as a citizen of this country, that the executive, I mean, Parliament, the legislature, works with the executive to ensure that there is a smooth and a quick you know, passing of this law, it, which it, governs the We gave a time frame, we gave ultimatum. By now, we should have had the draft bill parliament he has not come. not come out. The oil policy okay. came out some time but back, about five years ago. Yes. So, so let, let, let nobody no use excuse that parliament, parliament has... has there is a, there is let a, nobody use the excuse there, there, there there is, that parliament is the one blocking the progress in the oil sector. The president himself promised. There is a problem, Edmund, in the parliament. Because in my own view, parliament is not doing its work. Because initially, you remember when they were on recess, they claim by the petitioners, uh, Katun Inclusive and Gerard Karwang and the rest of them, was that we should have a special session of parliament yes. to look at the which actually have agreements yes. and then look at the integrities of these agreements and then we put things right and so on and so forth so that we can move. When this came, the thing turned out actually to be a witch hunt of people who are alleged to have eaten bribes. Oh, you call it a witch hunt? Yeah, it is a witch hunt. I mean, we know these documents were forged in one of the law firms in town. Oh, really? Absolutely. <laughs> because, of course, the investigation has not given the, the report to the, to the public. So, I am really as concerned as everybody else that Parliament doesn't seem to be doing its job because I should have expected that, for instance, after looking at those agreements, which were actually before Parliament, they were not outside Parliament, Yes, they should have looked at those agreements and then eventually demanded from government that they bring the laws so that we can pass them as quickly as possible so that we begin to explain. Well, they asked for them and the minister has not absolutely. been... But eventually what turned up was, oh, Baba has eaten a bribe, oh, so and so has eaten a bribe and all this. And, the, the, you know, these documents are forged. They are forged. And they forged in a law firm in this town. No, maybe that's yes. debatable. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do different? You, you know, it is very simple. I have told you, I was in Ghana recently. The oil sector is open to the media, to the public. So you open Ghana. the oil sector? Yes, just open the oil sector. The president is talking, he promised by 2012 there would be uh, early production, nothing on the ground. Even the oil pipeline. And uh, now, Parliament requested government to bring the law. Besides, we are pursuing the issue of corruption. We want to do the legislation. Nothing on, 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 on the ground. We, we, we gave a, a deadline. 
and that's why the speaker of parliament decided to kind of save the bills of the last parliament the president in his state of national address came up with a list of bills even we have some pending constitutional Fendi amendments Fendi three of them. pending constitutional amendments yes up to today they have not been tabled you had the electoral commission even warning of 2016 yes. there are some reforms the, the issue of id Which nothing is taking place we are just waiting for fire fighting fire fighting no i think uh, me i'm not convinced that parliament is doing its job because the demand should be as clear as possible. Let the bills come to Parliament, the bills uh, containing the governance of the oil sector in this country. I think as uh, citizens of this country, that's what we really would have expected from Parliament. They should actually put out that one as quickly as possible. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. You can call in now. Our numbers 0414 When you call in, please tell us your name and where. You are calling from tonight. President Yorim Seven is New Year's message. Is it in tandem with the aspirations of Ugandans? Our guests, Honorable Geoffrey Kanya, Shadow Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and Mr. Henry Peter Maiga, Hen Senior Administrator at Makere University, also a senior NRM mobilizer. You can also send a message via text. Someone is going to fix those phone lines so you can come through and contribute to this discussion. You can also send a text message. What you do is type the word spectrum in your phone browser, message, question, or comment, send it to 7197. Honorable Kanya, the yes. president comes out, he says he's going to tackle pro corruption, he's going to give his And then he talked about the, the issue of new resource and salary. Yes. Uh, you, you heard the primes are talking about 15%, then 20%, but inflation has been 30%. We, as we speak now, 28 to 29, fine, good. 27, actually. Yes, well, then you, you, you talk about increasing the salary of primary teachers, doctors of civil servant by 15%. Uh, I met some doctor those in, in, in Mulago, and he said he has appointment letter to go and work in Rwanda, and they, okay. they want to increase his pay by 100%. Let's hear from you, listeners. Spectrum, hello? 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 Yes, sir, your name? Hello? Yes, sir, your name? Hello? 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 You're live on Spectrum, your name? Yes, this is Mr. Nde Johnny from Setamukono. Yes. Uh, thanks yeah. for having hosted those members in the, uh, in the studio. Uh, it's the uh, fact uh, that when it comes to, to, to talk about the corruption fighting in Uganda, people just look at the thing as they head only to, to fight the corruption. To make fighting corruption or any vice in a state, it should be the, the work of each and everybody in the state. Even though we may pinpoint the president uh, uh, as somebody who has failed, but if we, the society, don't stop him, for example, the parliament and the other organs, organ, pay to vote for the president, in no way how corruption may be, may be false. Then when it comes to what is other kind of water, the, 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 the issues the president talked about, it should be the will of each and every Ugandan. How is the parliament reacting about the policy? Is, is it the parliament trying to, to, to leave the Ugandan exercise about them and is known to, to put them into consideration? So if the such expression do exist, nothing will be achieved. Spectrum, hello? Hello, your name? Can you switch off your radio or what are you from? Your name again? Hello? Yes, what are you saying? Your name? Hello? Hello? Tell us your name, my friend. Yes, I'm getting a lawyer. Yes, that's better. Yes, what are you I'm asking that gentleman for calling Mr. Maida. Hello? Your name? Okay. Well, Okay. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Yes, sir, your name? Edmund, hi. Very well, thank you. Your name? My name is Julius. Julius, yes. I just like the passion with which Mr. Maiga is speaking for government. It is so amazing, so amazing. That's what I wanted to say. Spectrum, hello? <laughs> Freedom of speech. Hello? Uh, Can you switch uh, to uh, radio and then talk yeah. to us? Uh, hello? Hello, your name? Uh, my name is James Kayondo. Yes, James. Uh, in fact, this is amazing that uh, Henry Maiga is today speaking on the behalf of NRM. It is really funny. But to go to the point, NRM government lacks 
commitment to push Uganda ahead. In fact, when I hear Mr. Maiga saying that uh, this plan has been laid and so on, it will be implemented, I just laugh. He's just politicking. But Mr. Maiga needs to know that Uganda needs we have been actually in Uganda all this long, for the last 25 years. We now know the NRM government. We know the way they pray there again. They are just, in fact, politicking, but don't take in Uganda, Uganda anywhere. For instance, when it comes to, you've just been discussing about parliament delaying to pass some of these laws. But one wonders that when it came to the, the, the law uh, regarding the cultural leaders, uh, asking them to first of all inform the president when they are going abroad, I think the thing was passed in just a couple of days, or if not one day. It was brought to parliament, and in the evening the thing was passed. How comes that a law regarding management of oil and gas is very, very crucial and important law? They are zigzagging around. They are, you know, we are taking Ugandans for a ride. All right. Hello. Hello. Yes, your name? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Your name? Um, my name is Paddy Kayong. Yes, Paddy Kayong. <laughs> yes, it is true that the, what the president said is really in consonant with our aspirations. And the NN government is committed to fighting corruption. Uh, there are some gentlemen who are attacking Mr. M uh, Peter for speaking for NRM government. But I want them to know that this he was really also not in opposition uh, from the beginning. And so many others were in opposition, but they were once in NRM. And as a Ugandan, he had a right to do so. Uh, for Mr. Ekanya, of course, by saying that the economy is growing in a negative trend, he's in opposition. If he said that he was growing well, he will not be in opposition. But uh, I want to assure them that uh, the economy is growing and it is even being it may even be going more than it is today because of there are some uh, people in the informal sector that are not catered for when you look at the, 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 the statistics. But uh, I'm sure that the, the government is fighting for as far as questions concerned and it will take every Ugandan to help the president and the government to fight corruption. Okay? All right. Inspector Mala? Hello. Yes, sir, your name? Hello. Hello, your name? Good evening. Good evening to you. Yeah, my name is David. David, yes. Sir. Uh, I must thank you for this program this evening. First of all, I think that nobody will be surprised by my dad. Peter Maika, he is in desperate need of a job, so nobody should be surprised about him. Uh, coming back to corruption in this country, you hear uh, at the end of the year, all preachers the, who took to the churches and grounds to pray for the nation. All the preaching by high priests was about corruption, or talking about corruption in the country. And what's considered? Who is corrupt? Who is who are corrupt? Say they are not corrupt. But the movement type of governance can never fight corruption simply because its foundation is based on corruption itself. Part of me, in conclusion, it is only three examples to, to, to emphasize my point. When we made laws here some time back, and the officials who messed up the gap fund uh, and, uh, and, and, and the global fund were arrested, but surprisingly, my road, it is the senior government officials, senior arm officers, who beg the most useful for the person to come out of prison. Number two, they, 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 they took up money. Do you know what happened in Sukkot? When everyone was rounded up, it is the government which came out and said, this is the government that took the money. It's now the last day. The only bribe. Those people who are the only bribe, even have had Mr. Maika now saying that the business which was attended, clearly showing that these people got the money, got the bribe, that were forced. And this was initiated by the government itself. Now, really, are these the people who are going to fight corruption? I can give you All right, let's take our final caller for tonight. Spectrum, hello. 
Yes, hello, Spectre. Yes, your name? I'm Jimmy from Cabo. James Cabo, yes? I want to ask you, Mr. Peter Michael, when will the country end up saying we are going to do this, we are going to do this for 20? And then, and then even they are talking of uh, this oil thing. Yes, hello. Yes. Go on. James? I was asking Mr. Maiga. Yes. It is the president himself who is the leader of this country. When they are talking about corruption, corruption is the head of the country. How will the people fight corruption? Why is it refusing it? And I wanted to ask Mr. That member of parliament. Yeah, let me pass a, a, a thing in the, in the parliament that like they, they remove the thing of saying that. It, Okay, we didn't hear which thing you wanted removed in Parliament, Mr. Maiga. I, I want to start by talking about corruption, because initially, when we were starting this conversation, uh, my position was that the fight against corruption is everybody's responsibility, irrespective of whether you're in RM, FDC, UPC, DP, and so on and so forth. And uh, sometimes pointing fingers will not make a lot of sense, and it will not make a lot of difference. Because I'm aware, for instance, uh, one time when there was a court hearing about these oil things, there is a court case which you have in the UK. There is a member of parliament who extracted actually money from the Parliamentary Commission for 10 days as per diem. And yes. he said for only three days. Oh, really? Came back. So I wonder whether that is not corruption. So when we are talking about corruption, we should be really talking about it with a sense of responsibility that it's actually a shared responsibility that everybody should do, be as concerned as everybody else. The second one which I want to say is that uh, uh, of course somebody has been talking about the, the, being amazed that it is Henry Michael who is talking on behalf of the NRM. Yes, I have too. It's a human right. And uh, I took a decision to leave the Uganda People's Congress and uh, those who are watchful unless they haven't been in this country, they know what's happening in the UPS at the moment. I left and I thought that problems would end with my departure. The problems have continued. Yeah, of course somebody can say that in the NRM there are problems too, but the difference is the NRM is the government. The UPS is not. I you in the politics to be near power or to be in the power, not to be outside power. And I had stayed actually in the opposition for a good 25 years looking for power in the UPC and it never came. So it's so a very short shortcut. I left. <laughs> I left. So on that one, I have no regrets and I will continue defending the NRM to the hilt. You are tired of waiting. Absolutely. I will defend the NRM to the hilt. So it's extremely important for us actually to be as concerned, Edmund, yeah. about the fight against corruption because it eats at the central, it really destroys our social and uh, moral fabric, you know? So everybody should be as concerned as everybody else. A citizen. You, you, you know, when the, 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 uh, the, the, the tradition saying that a fish rots from the head, as the head of a family, you set example. No, not one guy. Even the president goes to, to, goes to a neighboring country and he said he is leading thieves, then including him, because he's part of the people of this country and we are talking about the governance. And so, and the, the, even doctors say that if part of your hand is getting rotten, you have cancer, you cut it off. So the people of this country, really, the president, he, he has the power to cut off that hand. Hmm? If he himself, that's why I say the trail of corruption ends on his desk. Even the Bible says if he, a part of your body is taking you to hell, cut it off. Cut it off. He can order the governor, Bank of Uganda, to release over one point something trillion knowing that he's violating the procedure to buy jet fighters. Yes. And yet he can summon parliament and then the right procedure is followed. He's anti wasn't involved in corruption. So, you see, you can let us know, let us stop Find make, yes, okay, okay. let us stop simplistic. A, a villager who steals a chicken and somebody who steals money for HIV is for a half of the population of Uganda. Honorable. You get money from Bank of Uganda for buying jet fighters and then there are no drugs in the there hospital. Is, when I talk about growth and uh, uh, being in the negative, yes. I mean, let the people of this country just go to Google, Ubos website. Yes. Last year, agricultural growth was 15%. That growth was minus because five years ago, agriculture grew at a rate of 45%. 
1996. So if you compare 15% to 45, so it is growth 15% today. It is more. It is minus. Right. That's what we, we mean. Uh, the fish is exhausted. You know. So th these are fundamental I have, I have issues. A very small comment. Yes. I have a very small comment about uh, uh, the, the point he has raised of uh, jet fighters because in this country we have somebody called the commander in chief. The yes. US has one and the rest of the countries also have. Yes. I remember, and this reminds me of the comment. Well, uh, the, the, it reminds me of the war that was declared by George Bush Sr. against Iraq for the first time, I think it must have been in the early 90s. You have to go. And the parliament was, I mean, the Congress was objecting and all those kinds of things. But that, those explanations come later. If the commander in chief. Uh, if the commander in chief has seen the urgency of purchasing the planes, he went ahead and then fought that war. Then the explanations can come. And then there are problems with the economy in the US. Anyway, we have to go. Uh, thank you very much, Daddy. I guess Honorable Geoffrey Kanye, Shadow Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Thank you for coming to Spectra. Mr. Henry Maiga, Senior State at Macquarie University, also Senior Mobilizer in the NRM. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chis, to have a very blessed evening and a happy new year once again. Management Training and Advisory Center, MTAC, invites applicants for the